it was a fun trip, I gotta say. I mean, you know, it's where most of the movie took place down south, so there was a lot of chicken and iced tea to be had. <laughs> Lunch was, it was very hard to get to work after lunch every day. I remember that. <laughs> no, we couldn't afford it. What song is that? Tree River. I can make it through the night. You ever see Wayne's World? Yeah. Every time he sees Tina Carrera. Oh, right. That's the song. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Good job, guys. I'm glad you had, well, I'm glad YG, you picked up a YG. That's really nice. Uh, so and Marcus, well, say, say, Marcus Miller did most of the black score. Black yeah. Wayne's World. Marcus Miller is one of the greatest musicians in the world. Hard he played with Lisa Vandross. Exactly. I'm, saying, I'm just, world. let's give Marcus a shout out. Sorry. Marcus Miller, one of the world's greatest musicians, composer. He did most of the score. And he actually did it very organically. It wasn't like a lot of overdubs and technology. He literally got in a room with three other musicians and made most of those cues live. And then he did the entire hair battle. All that music was stuff that we created. Yeah, because they had their own music, but we couldn't afford that music. So we had to... It actually works. It's great though because it doesn't take you out of the piece. It flows with. We used to say he was able to take the music, the beats that he had, and compose yeah. music to fit each change. And we, and we really worked on the mix. The mix was really important. So it sounds like it's the music that was at the show, but it's actually not. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Fooled me. There you go. <laughs> Good going, guys. It was great talking to him. It was weird because I used to um, interview him on the old Chris Rock show. And, He's a regular. You know, if I was on this, you know, like four years, I probably interviewed him four times, and he was great every single time. And I think he was just happy to talk about something besides, you know, the normal politics, you know? Yeah. Actually, one, one thing, in the, um, the woman has a blue hair. What's her name in Harlem? Beauty Shop was the one that's talking about the hair weaves. Reverend Sharpton actually, was actually in the shop that day having his hair done. Yeah, in the was, back, but... yes. No, I was, I had a little speech to myself, a mantra in the car to prepare. I knew I had to just, I mean the point, doing a project like this, if you're not prepared to go all in, you get cut out of the movie. So. <laughs> You know what? You are absolutely right. right. There are girls who are on the cutting room floor. <laughs> it's it's a great way to be honest and open about an issue that I think is relevant for all women. You know? Yeah. And you have to own your beauty, you have to own your choice, whether it's a weave, a short haircut, an afro, cornrows, you have to own it. You can just at the bottom. You just don't want to go like deep. Work the bangs. Just work the bangs. <laughs> The bangs and the fridge. Well, I, mean, I think there, there have been docs done on various aspects of black hair for years, and there's Madam C.J. Yeah, Walker docs. Yeah, we watched a couple of right. docs. Right. Yeah. But there, I mean, the truth is, there's two things. We made a contemporary film, which is about things happening right now. We focused on women who were living with the hair to talk about it, and we have Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. And so his point of view is going to be very different, and his approach, this is how we ask the question, is going to be different than a bunch of guys, you know, if I had done the documentary about myself. Yeah.